Hello. I was working on an N1700 recently, wasn't I? Which had been donated to me. Now let's get stuck in and see if we can fix this thing. So I've set it on its back here and we're looking at the mechanism. This is the power supply and some logic on this board. Something I did want to briefly show you if I can get the angles right. The uh, ICs here are all in sockets. I've never seen uh, an N1700 with socketed ICs before, so uh, I suspect this is uh, an early example of the N1700 machine. And looking at the date code on this transistor, uh, it says 7720, so that implies it's 1977. Uh, I can't remember what year this model was released, the N1700. Was it 1977 or 1978? That's on the big power transistor 2N3055, which is, oh, one of my favourite transistors, if you can have a favourite transistor, that one. It gave you a lot of power handling for very little money. Right, so we need to replace the um, drum motor belt, of course, and which is already off, and the capstan belt before we go any further. Uh, the drum motor belt, you remember from the last video, I have some in stock, but they're not the best quality. And this one, the capstan belt, I'll have to find something. Looking here at the bracket for the motors, remember in my last video I showed you how you can slacken this off, but not completely remove it, in order to replace the uh, drum motor belt on its own. In this case I will take it right off so that I can change both belts. But I can see a bit of um, sort of burring on this screw here. So it looks like uh, at some point in the past the belts have been changed already. Um, I wonder if I can do this without taking the bracket off because I don't want to get into an argument with this micro switch here, which is actuated from uh, a lever on the other side of the deck. I, I seem to remember it can get a bit difficult to put that back in the right place. So that's this slackened off. Now I could go ahead and ch change the uh, drum motor belt, but I think I'll start with the capstan belt, which feels sticky. So it's got to come off the top of this bracket. So I mean slackening that bracket off. And I've mentioned it before, I do like this thing. There's some magnets here and they go past what is basically an audio cassette head there. I think it's probably an erase head from a cassette recorder just what Philips had to hand. There's a magnetic sensor, they had loads of them, so they didn't reinvent that particular wheel. Okay, that's the belt. It's always been <laughs> sat there for a long time in that uh, position and it's all gone sticky and horrible. There are some other belts. There's the, uh, the counter belt, which I'm going to leave alone because I think that's in good, good order. And there's another belt here, which I think is for this Ah, that's the, uh, is that actually the capstan motor? No, that's the capstan motor, so what's that? Is that the FG generator? Is that belt in good order? I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever changed that belt before, so that's going to be interesting. It feels like it's working, so I'm going to leave it alone. A little slack on it, but I don't believe there's any force on that one and it is rotating, so I'm going to leave it alone for now and change it only later if I have to. Right, let's find a replacement for this piece of licorice. Now I'm not going to find an exact belt here, I'm just going to rummage through my collection and some people have been watching my channel and have kindly donated collections of drive belts to me from when they used to be in the trade and uh, I'm very grateful for that because uh, they can be difficult to source. So this kit here was for some, I don't know which, some Hitachi VHS machine, which is not of great importance historically, so we won't worry about that. We'll quite happily steal the drive belt from it. And that looks about the right size. It really does look a pretty good shot at it. Let's try that. It's going to be fiddly to install. I do find this construction quite odd because Philips have for some years 
tried very hard to make their equipment manufacturable, to make it easy to build, and yet clearly this wasn't easy to build. By mounting the motors facing the wrong way, they've made it hard to build. Right, that I think is the belt on the motor pulley properly. Let's see if I can put it on the um, flywheel without it falling off the motor. Ah, it fell off. It was so close, it was almost completed, but uh, it fell off, so uh, start again. Right, this is the point at which it fell off the uh, motor pulley last time. Let any twists work their way through. That looks absolutely perfect. Let's um, fit the drum belt, which you'll have seen in my last video. I wasn't great, uh, very pleased with the quality of the ones I bought on eBay, but right now is what we have. Right, there may be more we can do with the belts in here, but right now I think we're in a position that the belts should be good enough to test the machine. That bracket's on, let's do up this bracket. Put the panel back. So before I uh, try a tape in it, I'm going to uh, have a look at the mechanism, in particular whether there's anything that needs lubricating because the levers can sort of dry up a bit. So we'll check these levers and the uh, loading motor and I'll um, go over the pinch roller with a little bit of that uh, I've used before, um, platen clean, just to take the shine off it. Could do it in situ but I think in this case it's so easy to remove I'll uh, take it off. Circle clip on the top, then the washer, pinch roller. So it's not in bad shape, but I think we can uh, make that just a little better. So some platen clean. You don't want to get it on your fingers too much there. Apply a little of your favourite um, oil on some of the moving surfaces. Okay, I think we've done enough that uh, we could go with power up. And these things, generally, as far as I'm aware, will go through the motions of operating even when they don't have a tape in them. Which makes it a little bit easier to uh, exercise it without destroying a tape. Let's uh, try it. Power up, clock is flashing. Laced up nicely and unlaced very promptly. Sounds like the drum is not getting up to speed. I had that problem the other day on an N1502. Sounds like it's trying to get up to speed. You put it into play mode. Okay, that mechanically seems to be working. Try fast forward. Fast forward seems to be locked out. Rewind is up, is working okay. Why is fast forward locked out? So I'd like to know what's wrong with fast forward. And we obviously have drum speed problems. 
It might be getting there. It could be those rubbish belts. Play. Why am I locked out of fast forward? That's odd. Right, I'll power it down. Rewind is locked out now because it's powered down. So, hmm. Try it again. On. Rewind. Play or start as it's labelled. Why is wind locked out? Problem with uh, part of the mechanism here. Let's uh, give you a better view. So we're now set up with the uh, servo panel here swung out of the way so we can see what's going on. Uh, you can't really get it to play in this mode, in this position, because when you press the start button, it operates this lever here, and that's the record one. Uh, so without this, you can't get it to play properly. But uh, we're looking at the uh, wind problem anyway, so uh, we should be able to see what's wrong from this angle. Okay. So it's switched on. I can put it into play, or start as it's described. Let's have a look at the uh, wind. What's locking that out? Rewind is not locked out. Rewind is not locked out. It's going to be a lever that's not moving properly. There we are. Oh, it's working now. Was it locked out or was it just heavy? I'll lubricate this part of the mechanism a little bit more. Power it up again, switch on, play, rewind, fast forward. OK, we can put the uh, servo panel down again now. So right now it feels like the biggest problem I have is the uh, poor quality belt used in the drum motor, which is just making it struggle. It sounds like it's getting up to speed now. So it might be worth um, trying a tape and then we'll have to tune the TV into it because there's uh, only a modulator output on this, no AV outputs yet. Okay, that's the uh, channel I've used on an N1700 video recorder before, so it should be fairly close. Um, but of course the modulator could be uh, somewhere slightly different. Yes, it looks like I'm going to have to tune it in. That's close. Right. Where are we? Bit of um, capstan loss. Looks like, uh, yeah, it's struggling to lock capstan.
Tracking seems quite fussy. I suspect the heads aren't up to much, but we'll see. There is some tracking, the tracking control works, so it's not like we don't have any capstan uh, servo. Heavy on the dropouts. Okay, not, not horrendous. I think we'll um, clean the tape path some more and try a different tape. Right, I'm not going to get satisfactory results out of this machine with those heads in there. So, before I do any more work trying to find out why there's a bit of a tape path problem, I really need some better heads. I've got another video recorder, which I found in my shed, and it says, I wrote a label on it 10 years ago, and it says, poor colour or no colour and needs work. But poor colour and no colour is virtually never head related, not on this sort of format anyway. So, Hopefully the heads are okay. Let's try the heads from the other machine in here. You'll have seen me changing heads before on these. You have to take a pulley off the bottom, but it's a lot easier if you uh, can do it quickly before you let go of the tension on the head drum drive belt. So before I take these heads off, I'll get the other heads out of the uh, spare machine. Okay, so now we're looking at the uh, pulley with the drive belt and you feel a little bit of end float in the head. It just feels like about half a millimeter. So we'll undo these two Allen keys with the two Allen bolts with a two millimeter Allen key. So that's slackened off. So here's the magic bit. What you do is have your new heads ready to fit. My hand is about to go here to pull the other head drum out on the long shaft, but hold this in place. So that's the suspect heads removed. And the hopefully better heads slide into the drum the other side. and gently down onto this pulley. Always be careful that the heads meet the drum gently. Once I fitted heads on a V2000 machine and I let them smash into the drum too hard and actually broke the head tip, which is quite annoying because brand new video heads they were. I will found if you have ball ended Allen keys like these, that they slip in these bolts, these um, grub screws. And to get the head end float just right so you can feel a little bit of end float. Now since these are only suspect at the moment, not proven defective, I'll put them somewhere safe. I will just clean up this head drum a bit before I uh, put the tape in. That looks ready to try but I'll make sure this drum dries out properly before I uh, put a tape in there. Okay we're ready to try. We, we know we've got the tape path problem but let's see if fundamentally that the picture looks any better. So we still have that tape path problem. I'm definitely seeing better where where it stops mistracking. I'm seeing that the highlights are no longer covered in black streaks. So I think now we just need to uh, solve the tracking problems. But yes. It's definitely better. The highlights are no longer streaking, so those heads are better. Right, now we have something we can fix. So I think the problems we have are the servo, the, the, the capstan servo is wandering, and also maybe the tape path. Or well, the tape path is wandering, and then the capstan servo is struggling as a result. So we need to find out why we're getting tracking bars on the picture wherever we put the tracking control. So that says it's a tape path fault. It's very often going to be the pinch roller. So uh, perhaps we'll swap the pinch roller out and see where that gets us. We left this machine with tracking that was wandering around, especially at the bottom of the picture. If you look at the way the head works, it contacts the tape, the head rotates that way, it contacts the tape at the start, at the back here, uh, the head actually the whole drum rotates when it laces up. So this ends up over here somewhere. 
So this guide here is super critical and the whole tape path is super critical. If there's ever a format where cleanliness was important, it's 1500 and 1700. So I've cleaned this guide, this guide, this guide, and I've cleaned the capstan that was fairly contaminated. Uh, and I've cleaned a bit of the lower drum. So let's just see if that helps. If it doesn't, then I'll swap out the pinch roller. See, the, the tracking is doing something. If it wasn't doing anything, then there'd be a, a, a capstan lock fault, but that's fine. It is working, but it can never get to a point where the tracking bars are all off the screen. So there's a point somewhere that the tape is not contacting the head properly, and it wanders. Right, let's change the um, pinch roller and see if that helps. Um, we'll change it with the one from the same machine as we borrowed the heads from. There is, that pinch roller might not be great either, but um, hopefully it'll help us debug the problem. This pinch roller looks okay now, but let's, you know, let's prove it. Right, here's the pinch roller from the other machine. It actually looks to be in worse condition than the original, but you never can tell. I think I'll also flip it over, which puts a less worn part well, against the tape, at least to some extent. I'll give it a quick uh, IPA down. We sat in a storeroom for some years. Okay, let's give that a whirl. It's uh, actually worse. I can see the tape shifting up and down. Uh, I think we'll uh, take that pinch roller out and return it to the other machine. Let's try the same trick of uh, inverting this one. So it was that way round. Unlikely to help, but give it a whirl. Let's take a close look there at the tape. Is it weaving? So you look at the tape there, just as you see it um, visible in the cassette wind, uh, door. Uh, does it seem to be weaving up and down? And the answer I think would be no, not significantly. So I suspect the problem is further back in the tape path, but you don't get to see much of it, unfortunately, on this machine. Tape path accessibility is quite poor. Right, I've been working hard on this and I wanted to show you some of the things I've done. The pinch roller I'd swapped out from another machine and that was worse. So I've actually put it back but rotated it. I've cleaned the audio control head and I've very slightly sort of lapped it with some very fine um, glass paper. At the bottom it had some crud that wasn't coming off. I've cleaned the lower drum extensively and all the guides. I've also actually just tried a different tape because I think the tape I was using was poor and I think I've got this into a position where the machine should run. Um, everything has worked but I've not tried it all together so let's uh, see if the good tape with the pinch roller inverted and the tape path cleaned to perfection will uh, give us something resembling a decent result. One thing I'm not happy with is the drum drive belt. It really isn't um, very good. And you can hear it hunting a bit. So I'm sure that's causing us some drum uh, instability. But I think you can see that uh, that's working. 
there's some shimmer, some horizontal shimmer. So I'm going to blame the drum belt for that. And a little bit of colour instability at the top, though that could be the recording. I think if we can sort out the drum belt and I can try some more tapes, that may not be real. The other thing is, of course, that this is running from an aerial connection. And I really want it connected via AV outputs. And then it can go to a digital time-based corrector, which can also help with all of the defects we're seeing. But uh, fundamentally, I think you can see the machine is working. We'll just try the tracking a bit. So go over there. Yeah, tracking disappears over there and at the other side. And it sits reasonably good in the middle. So that looks about right. Um, my wife says that I'm this character, Stepto, because I collect too much junk. Uh, you tell me if you agree. I certainly do like a, a few video recorders. So that fundamentally is clearly working, but the main problem we have is head drum instability and it needs AV outputs. Uh, now, you don't want to see me doing AV outputs again. I've done that on a couple of these machines already. So uh, I'll just do that one offline. Let's uh, take a quick poke about in here then. So under here is where I'll fit the AV output uh, board. I've built several of them and the sockets will replace these blanks. I'll fit an audio, which is easy, because uh, that connects to, there's an audio connector already, I think, and video, which is a bit harder, because I have to build a preamplifier that connects to the modulator here. Then the other issue we have, that is definitely powered down, is um, I'm underwhelmed by the quality of these drive belts. It's not that they're the wrong size, it's just that they're low quality. So uh, need to find a source for better quality drive belts for 1502 and 1700 machines. Well, I hope you've enjoyed us working through this uh, lovely condition N1700 machine that was donated to me by Lady Deborah McMillan. A big thank you to her for this. Um, it's really nice to see it up and running, running again. Um, I will do, of course, a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future, so please remember to like, share and especially subscribe. Bye for now.